Hey guys, it's so good to be with you again today. We have a standard tutorial video today. Not, it's not a hangout video. I'm going to talk about bib necklaces. And buddy, let me tell you what, there's a lot to tell you about bib necklaces. In fact, this is probably going to be a series, maybe four, five, six videos long because there's so many ways you can go with it. And this time is a time of year when people want to like get all honking and big and effusive with their jewelry. And you can go hog wild with it or not. Up to you. So this time I'm going to show you what I've done with some grid chain. I'll explain to you what that is when you come around back over here and I'll show you how it's done. Okay guys, I got so much to show you. I have to wonder, boy, am I going to get it all done? But I'm going to do my best to show you the basics this time and then we'll probably come back to you in a couple of days and do another video so it won't be long we'll have subsequent videos with more ideas about it. but anyway grid chain now I didn't bring a whole length of it down well you know well you'll be able to tell <laughs> this is grid chain right here um, we have it right now at the website in six inch lengths that you can take part to do a bib or do a charm bracelet however you like um, it's kind of expensive chain but the thing is is what you can do with it so I'm gonna demonstrate it's really cool designer looking stuff it looks very very expensive this jewelry and it's not not hard at all to make so anyway what I started out with is last week I made myself this charm bracelet and it only goes off to one side. You know what? I shouldn't have piled all this chacha on my arm so I could put this on and show you. But maybe you can get the idea. You know, I try to plan these videos and then I can't remember what I want to say. And then it just gets all balled up anyhow. <laughs> so far, people still keep coming back. <laughs> but anyway, you can see how it's going to look this way. You need to bring it in the frame. Am I in the frame? Will that yeah. help? There you go. All right. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so I just did it off to the one side because I thought that was enough for me. And then I put this big grindstone toggle. I'm not sure you can see that on there. I'm having these made for us right now. I love them. And those are, these are awesome. They're great as a focal. But I put it off to the side. This thing is so comfortable to wear. It's so silky. You know, the grid chain is so silky. So you can, you know, make a chain out of it just by itself and just wear it. Or, you know, make something else. But I, I put this on, wear it all day and... It doesn't bother me at all. It's not heavy or anything. So anyway, I thought, well, you know, let's play with the grid chain. Let's see how far we can go. Because, you know, some people, when I first made this, said, well, why don't you do the whole thing? You know, it kind of looks odd to me. Well, you know, I love the asymmetrical, unexpected type stuff. So I did that. But to do a necklace, I started this one out. And this is all pearls. And basically, all I did was counted off how many links and when you do this you want to make sure that if you cut the chain that the circlet is on the end sticking out now there are other types of this some people call it chain mail chain that you can buy um, it's always expensive though I've never seen any that was inexpensive but when you get it whether you buy it from me someday or if you get elsewhere you want to make sure if you cut it and you're going to make something from it that you have the circlets are on the end because that's how you're going to hang it. Okay? And then you just count it. And what you want is you will want an uneven number of these links because that way you find a center for it, especially if it's a bib. You always have to have an uneven amount because you're going to have them up the side and then you need to have it centered in the middle and that will be the odd link. Does that make sense? Hope so. So I will show you on this little short piece what I'm talking about a little bit. You'll be able to see it better. But I think this is going to be pretty numb. Diane's over there on the other side. She was, Hi, everyone. She was supposed to pop in here with me, but she didn't. I forgot, and she didn't remind me. But she's over there, and she might ask some questions. Javi's over here to the side yep. of me. May ask some questions, too. But anyway, basically, it's, it, the most of the time in it is planning it out and you know, putting all your beads on the head pins and then blending them. Because, like, for example, there are all kind of different pearls on here. They're all, like, white or off-white. And I like to do that. 
I like to mix cream with white, off-white with white. I just think it gives a piece depth, especially if there are a lot of pearls on a piece. Now, if it's just a few, then it would look strange. It would be sticking out. But when you've got a bunch, that's when you can blend away. Color anything you do in beading. You can really blend when you, when you have something that's fussy and dangly like this. Now, Diane said she thought... This would be better. Let me get in the frame. She thought this would be better. I shouldn't have worn all these bracelets. Somebody told me that I should wear more bracelets. <laughs> and they know who they are. They're probably not watching this, though. Um, she thought it should be a charm bracelet. Like I know. mean, it's really pretty as a necklace, too. But when I first saw it, my immediate response was, oh, what a pretty bracelet. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? If you wanted to get really crazy and off the wall, make this into a bracelet. And then wear this with it, with it too. Mm. Oh, like a connection. On top and to the side. That's kind of hard to get the yeah. impression from it because I got all these other ones on. But maybe I, I would, would do two. We should lay yeah. it on your other arm. Yeah. Well, well, maybe I can. I don't know if I. Maybe I'm wrong too. <laughs> I don't think so though. I think this would type work look like a second layer or something. Put it up here. And then these pearls would hang down over and look like a really wide like, cuff type thing. If you wanted, you could even take two lengths of this and connect it. One more jumps. You can do that with Rolo too. There are a lot of chains that you can do that with. Bibs can be made with so many different types of chain. And you can really take your handsome chunky chain and really go for it. Because you do need some support. But when you're making a bib necklace... The one thing about it, you can be economical with this chain because you do not need it to go clear around your neck. Now, you can do that like a Cleopatra-style necklace. Like a collar. Yeah, collar. But you don't need to spend all that money on that expensive chain. Just take a piece and put it in the middle. Or say, for example, you have remnants or leftover pieces from other projects and they're like three, four inches long. you got plenty to make a bib necklace. You just have to figure out how you're going to beat up the back. So I'm going to show you a case in point of that. So I've got this piece right here that I did, put this together before I came down to do the video with you today. And it's got the odd links. So let's count them off. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Need 15 because you have to have a center, the one in the middle. So I would count over seven, and that would be my center. Okay, so if I'm making this a bib, you probably want to start with your centers first. And there's actually more than one center when you do a bib, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I would start out, I, I got all this stuff beaded up. I just worked out of a, you know our bead mixes we have at the site? I just worked out of a bag of bead mix. It's fun to do that. And I put a little bit of glass with it, too. So anyway, i got to find my longest one, because I made one that's really long. And I'm making it in fall colors. And I'll tell you why I did this. I, I'm really inspired by this um, necklace and set of jewelry that they have over at 1928 Jewelry. And my friend Pia designed it quite a few years ago. And I l just love it. And they've been looking around over there to see if they have any of it left because I wanted it. I might get a piece or two. I might, they might find something. But anyway, I'm inspired by the, the colors. This is a fall line, and it's all these colors. So I'm going to count over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here, eight is where it should be. So let's put it on there and see how it looks. Open up a little bit more. Yeah, the most time, I think, just comes with, you know, putting your beads together. You know, wrapping them and get them all together. But sometimes maybe it's in the planning too. You know, if making one of a kind. Then, so that. Let's see how that's gonna be. Yep. See how it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth is in the middle. So that that's your center. Okay. Now you. I said you had two centers. You do. And here's the way I figure that. So I want to take two more longer pieces. I have to be exactly the same. At least not for my type of doing things. I like things really random. 
I just think it's just funner that way. But anyway, so now on my seven that are left, I have to find the center. One, two, three, four. That's the center. And I'll take and put mine on there. Because it's kind of like when you do assemblage, guys. You know, oh man, this wants to fight me. Um, when you do assemblage, you know how you put your biggest pieces down first on your design? This is kind of like that principle. We're putting our biggest pieces down first. So I've got that. And then I've got over here, find the center. One, two, three. It's right here, four. It's the fourth one. My my jumps. Javi looks like she's taking a nap over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. She, she, had her, she, she had her head down. Oh, jeez. Well, this is a long day. This is a long day. I didn't get I didn't get ready on time, you know. So it's just gonna make her late. I feel bad about that. Not really. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. So one, two, three, four. I'll tell you something. The first time I ever tried what you're doing where I made all my little dangles ahead of time mm -hmm. was for the workshop last year when we did the wonky wire. Uh -huh. And I made a whole bunch of dangles at home ahead of time. And boy, did that make it easier yep, to does. just play with them and set them up the way you wanted them to See be. See what you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. All right. So now um, for my end ones, that is where I'm going to want to have probably little. So let's find some little ones. Yeah, just like that. I laid it all out and it made uh -huh. it so nice Yeah, and, and you can do this if you have a beadboard. You know, you can lay them out. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. It had to be a big fat beadboard because it's in a channel. But it's that type of a thing, you know, where you can lay it all out and see how it looks and how you want it. Because it saves you time. If you just start randomly hooking it up all over the place, then, you know, you may have to randomly take it apart all over the place. Right. So, anyways... So then I have my ends, and then from here I will have another center, and just go like that, finding your center and then filling in. And you'll find that, likely as not, you're going to have a balanced design, and that's what you want, is a balanced design. You know, a lot of tutorials to show you how to do stuff. But it's these little nuance of things about how to be a really good designer that sometimes kind of elude us or we forget to tell people, you know, when we're working along and helping them, you know, why do we do this? Why does this balance? Why would you want to do that kind of thing? I may have to come back to that, Jim. And at the end of your work, you always go back and check all your jumps and make sure they're perfectly closed. Okay, so I would just, you know, keep going until this is finished and I don't really know if I need to just continue but I'll just show you okay so now I've got three between here so this would be my next center that's the thing about doing bibs it's just looking for your center looking for your center looking for your center I don't know who taught me that I just think it's innate you know but that's something I could share with you right off the bat if you've not done this before to help you start out in a good way <clears throat> so I'll put my other one. I have another one kind of sort of just like that. So I'm going to put it over here. And when I do my beads for this stuff, I don't necessarily plan them to be two like this, two like this, two like this. If I'm doing a stack beaded necklace up the sides of a necklace, I might. But for something like this, a lot of times it's real random. The next video I do on this, which will be probably Sunday afternoon, um, I'll bring down a bib that I made like 15 years ago or more and show you what what I did with that one too. Also, I'll have this one finished by then because I won't get it all finished on here. I just wanted to show you how to work with the grid. So you can see, all I have to do now is just fill in. That's and I've got pretty. all my stuff set up. And I'll have colors of fall here. It will be so pretty. And all I have to do now is figure out you know what chain I'm going to use. So I've got some possibilities here. I love these rhinestone clasps. They just make the best ornament, you know, for your work. Uh, you don't have to use that, but for a type, if you're going to use, if you're going to have this hook on the side, and I often do that. You don't have to put it in the back if you want, but 
do something ornamental or large and chunky because this is a statement piece so you want to make a statement with your hardware too that's my opinion but anyway to do this now I have to finish and I'm going to need probably mm, 16 inches maybe of chain to make this fit upright because then I'll end up with probably a 1920 inch necklace um, which for me would be about right where I would want it to hit you because this is not going to be a long long necklace you don't make this hang down this is one that's going to come up closer to your face this kind of big necklace if you want it to hang down then you might take your center and do a big long piece in there and we're going to do that another time okay so now I just have to pick out my chain you know maybe I use this now I'm not I don't have enough so maybe I'll have to take a little of this and put on there just mix it up and that's fine makes it very eclectic still very designed or maybe what I would do is take and do some pearls down the side with a little bit of red I could take and I could paint my um, bead caps to add a little color find some rondelles that are red maybe throw in there I just think it makes it look very festive and nice I could also go with red beads up the side if I have some big chunky ones you need chunky beads if you're gonna do this don't go in there with a the little ditzy beads and say oh you know this is gonna work no it's not going to work. You have to have big chunky beads. And I know often I don't have those at the website because I just haven't gotten into it. But now I'm finding out how good chunky beads are. So you will see more of them there. But anyway, that's how I'm going to do it. That's how I'm going to approach it. I think I'm probably going to go with the pearls. And then it'll hook here. And it'll be really fun to wear. So, anyway, for now, that's my idea about using grid chain to make a bib necklace. We're going to come back. The next video is going to be with this one finished and talking about where you could go from there to make it even funkier and more cool and just a beautiful statement piece. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, please. I just love it when I see those thumbs up on this videos. It just makes my heart sing, makes me feel like this, I did... I did it for a good reason, and I helped somebody, so the thumbs up are, are much appreciated. So you have a wonderful day, and we'll be back real soon.